scratch my nose because it's itchy. So I am live. I'm live here in the liveness. Pretty cool. Glad to, you know, be live in the liveness. Um, and that's cool. So this is hello, Fletcher. This is, yeah, this is totally kind of spur of the moment. I was not expecting anything to happen here. But I decided I was going to do a live. Hey, CS. CS, you should get an email from Dave in the time now. Jason, the man of the hour, everyone. The man that's made this all possible. Tonight, what we're doing here, all of a sudden, um, okay, there's no filter. If I'm wearing, if I look good, I look good. I don't know. I shaved. That's what you missed. I shaved this, this one right here. I shaved because I had a job interview. That I had to go to, so that I had well virtually. That's why I look different. Shaved yesterday, which I haven't done in. Uh, God, I don't know when the last time I shaved was, but but the interview went swimmingly. Yes. So once again, I am drinking my girly drink of choice. <sighs> Lots of rum. Why is the rum gone? Because of this guy. That's why. So, we are going to look at this wonderful box tonight. I can't see the screen. You guys can see the screen, right? We've got Smoky Mountain. We've got, you know, I, I, I'm, uh, I think I did really well on it. It's a great position. It's a corporate instructor, instructor position, you know. My skin is glowing like a sailor on leave. My skin is glowing like a sailor drinking lots of rum is what it is, is what's happening. So that's what, that's what the glow is. Okay. So um, I don't have the boys here tonight, so I can kind of let loose a little bit and do like a – this is Michael Jackson right here. You can't see my arms, but they're like uh, – anyway. Um, so – you guys have to excuse me for one moment. Actually, I'm going to have to. Uh, um, hold on. That was Darren, as in Darren in the shop. So, hello. Hello, guys. Anyway, we are going to open this up. We are going to see what we got. I have like nine knives in front of me. What am I going to use to open it? Pocket dump. I got nothing in my pockets. I got I got stuff all over the table. Um, I got this one. Look at this one. Look at that one. Look at... Eh. Try not to move the computer. Look at this one. Look at that one. How about this one? How about that one? What about this one? What about that one? Or this one? Or, yeah, I got, like, stuff all over the table right now. Um, and I still have those two Ethan Gross in boxes that we're going to do a whole reviews on. So, uh, uh, anyway, let's, um, let's figure this out. I think I have a voicemail that I'm going to check real quick. Real quick. No, I don't. So we'll just, use, you know what? We'll use the uh, the M4. The M4 PM2 with Jade because we're obsessed with Jade. Let me, let me get this box opened up here. Opening box sequence started. Can you guys tell I've had 
after a successful interview and the boys being picked up, I had, I had, I've already had a few. It's so delicious. So let's talk about this box because, um, so when someone breaks into your house and you're trying to figure out which gun to grab, yeah, right. It's like, what would they, what would they best like to be sh stopped with? You know, what would they feel most manly being taken down with? So the Smoky Mountain box, which is provided by Jason. Uh, Jason is awesome because this is Jason's subscription. Jason pays for it, has it shipped here. I review it. I send this stuff out to Jason. And every once in a while, Jason lets me keep a cool thing in it. Like, let me keep that cool hat. That was awesome. Ugh. Bleh. First item out of the box. Bleh. Not, not just don't like it. Bleh. But you'll see. Um, so... Uh, I'm trying not to spoil the surprise. Why am I doing it like this? Because I'm in a good mood. And, I, you know, we haven't done, like, a live unboxing in a bit. We have our secret confidential information. We'll use that in a moment. Oh, this looks good. Jason, you're not getting these back. I'm, I'm eating these. Okay. Um, let me continue to unpack. It's an odd-shaped box. It's like, you know, it's like a... It opens at the end. This is nice. And if Craig tunes in, Craig's really going to like this. A uh, couple more items. Matt. And, uh, and, okay. All right, guys. I got everything. I um, uh, just got a model. Playing kid P51 Mustang. If someone who's never done a model kit before, know anything that's good for, like, beginning into the model. Yeah, read. Oh, I'm going to answer this. Okay. Read all the instructions before you build a plane. Go through start to finish and know what you're going to do. Um, and don't use the model glue that's like the old school in the tube. That's crap. Get like liquid. Go to my model building channel, Air Force Builder, right? And look at the glue I use, the liquid glue in a bottle. It's so much better. It dries quicker and you're not likely to get yucky glue fingerprints all over the thing. Um, in fact, watch my model building channel and learn as much as you can. So, ooh, we got an OtterBox sticker this time, which I don't see any OtterBox products at all in this thing. So that's that's something. Um, but we got this. Oh, we're gonna have fun tonight, guys. We are gonna have fun. Um, I really hope that you guys enjoy this. I, I hope it's as fun as I feel. So we only have one sticker, but it's an OtterBox sticker, which is different. So the Smoky Mountain box comes in three levels, right? In case you don't know. You've got the GI, which is like their basic box. You've got the Officers Club, the OC, which is like the um, the the advanced, we'll say. And then you've got the General's box, the five-star, which is like their pro. And um, I'm looking at this, and you guys haven't seen this yet. Okay, now when I do a regular unboxing, it's a top down, and like so you sort of see the stuff as I throw it on the table. I'm not feeling good about this GI box. I'm not. Oh, bleh, bleh. that's my feeling about it. Um, so we're gonna get into this. Um, the new paint up. Oh. You know, uh, has anybody seen the video, uh, the Smoky Mountain video on the new? I got this. I swear I got this. Case flipper knife. I don't know what it's called. Case flipper. Um, looks pretty cool. So in the GI box, we have one, two, three, four items. Five items. In the officer's club, two. And then in the general's box, one. <sighs> I don't even want to, I don't even want to do this. Um, A one eighth scale B fifty two would be huge. Anyway, let's do this. Uh, let's let's start with this. So we're starting in the GI box with the Smith and Wesson Extreme Ops Liner Lock. <sighs> That's your big exhale. Where is the Extreme Ops Liner Lock? What is it? Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. I'm looking for it. Where is it? 
One, two, three. I'm sorry, guys. I'm look. I'm looking. So this is so 13. Give me one second to make sure we have all of these here. Because I just do not. Oh, here it is. Okay, this is it. Sorry. The the box was numbered different. Hey, Gun Cotton. Hi, Chris. Welcome. Um, so we have here a 7CR17 blade. Now, uh, almost everything in the GI box is, is a Smith & Wesson knife. Oh, yeah. This is the finest O'Reilly Auto Parts store. It was up by the cash register knife you can buy. Smoky Mountain price is $5.99. Aluminum scales. Here's the clip. It goes nowhere. Um, now, what is their definition of extreme or ops for that matter? That this is an extreme ops knife. Oh my God. Look at that lockup. It's like almost off the off the blade. <laughs> it is, it does, it wants to be a CRKT M16. Look at that. Look at the handle. Oh my god. It it almost is at like a hundred percent lockup right off the bat. I'm afraid to do the lock test on this thing. 7CR17 steel. This is like the bare minimum. Like, so if I'm buying a knife, this is the bare minimum steel that I would consider that it even could possibly hold an edge. Hang on. In the world of alphabet steel. Um, to its credit, let's find something positive to say. It's the, the texturing is nice and grippy. The holes make it nice and grippy and light. The jimping's not bad. And that's the last positive thing I can say about this thing. The coating you can tell is like a paint coating. It just has that, you know, it, you can tell. Mm. Mm. At least it, uh, Gum gumball machine shit. That's good. Come on, cut the fucking bang. Son of a bitch. There. That was great. I could that that like that's the kind of stuff you can't engineer if you tried. Um I forgot a positive. It says Smith and Wesson. Is it but you know, is that a positive for Smith and Wesson? That their name is on this thing, if you think about it. So this is $5.99. The only okay, so like I'm not like I said, I'm not even doing look at look at the lock up on this, how far it is. I'm not even gonna do the lock test on this because I'm just scared. I'm just scared. The only thing I would do with this is I would say, like, look, if you want to practice some kind of customizing stuff on this, you could, because you have this nice big metal scale, right? Um, okay. Now, so Taryn, now there, I will say, I got to admit, there is a certain line of Smith and Wesson knives that are not bad. This is not one of them. Not at all. Um, like I could maybe see like, yeah, I could, I could practice sanding on this. I could practice coating on this. I could practice it's aluminum. I could sandblast this off and like flame anno it and stuff, but this thing goes directly in the I don't like it pile. The centering is as you'd expect. Good for sharpening practice? Yeah, that too, Dean. Good good point. 7CR is, it's a mild steel. It It's not going to just like bend for you. You have to work a little bit. Um, hey, Sunshine. Sunshine, I got a box from you today. Um, but the boys aren't here, so I'm not opening it. Um yeah, this one this one's going straight in the don't like it. Don't like it. Which will go, I don't know, I'm running out of space. Over here. Right there. Okay. Next. Costing one dollar more, Smith and Wesson folder. 
Let me make sure I get the right one because there's two. Yeah, it's this one. 8CR13 blade. Now, that's not bad steel. That's decent steel. That's average quality steel. It's not terrible steel. Um, but is this the one they're talking about? Yes, it is. Bam. You know what? I'm going to use... Oh, I forgot. It's not one handable. I'm going to use this one to open this one up. So we can take a look at it. And I, I got to tell you, though, automatically it looks, it looks better. The quality looks a little bit better. It's got a deep carry clip. Unfortunately, it's tip down only. It's right hand only. Same kind of coating on the blade. Um, plastic scales. They're not bad. They got this kind of grippy section going through. They're not great either. Not great either. Um, big old, I mean, I'm hoping I can get these on the little webcam there. Huge plastic washers. Look at that. Oi. This guy. This is the comment of the night. Big plastic. I mean, it's, I wouldn't even. See, this is funny because she doesn't like, she doesn't like meat <laughs> in that way. That's funny. Um, I have, I got my carnivore club. I haven't opened it yet though. So I don't know what's in it, but I'll probably do that tonight. Centering is, is off like the other one. $6.99. Okay. Here's the flip. Ready? Okay, there we go. Now, be fair. Sometimes oh, this salt liner sucks. Sometimes even good knives need to break in a little bit. Damn it, bitch. Okay, can do this. Can do this. Can do this. Oh. I guess if you give it, oh, Jesus, and now the lock is super sticky. If you give it a little bit of, I was going to say a little bit of wrist. <clears throat> but then the lock gets sticky. Does the lock get sticky if we just open it? Let's see. Just open it gentle. The lock is still sticky. Oh. So more, yeah. we're putting these in, in not just don't like it, but garbage. Garbage pile. Can that... Can't that like be fixed when you loosen the screw if it has it? You mean the pivot? Um, so, well, okay, I see where you're going with that, Chris. Sorry, I hit the mic. Um, it so you can loosen it, but what you're also doing is you're loosening the entire blade. You're affecting where the lockup sits. Um, and this already has play in it. Look, wait, look, hold on. Can you see it? This already has blade play in it. So yes, sometimes you can. Fix that by loosening the pivot a little bit. But you're affecting a lot more than just that. Now, there are some times also where loosening the pivot doesn't fix that because it's just poorly engineered. Now, on the other hand, if we use the thumb studs, we can get a good snap open up every single time. Um, so, you know, it, it's just, it's not engineered to be a flipper. It's not designed to be a flipper. Um, it's just, it's not, it's not made wrong. It's just not made to be a flip. It's not a flipper. They don't give you the weight and the weight and balance is wrong. Um, yes, there are. Okay. So here we go. Are there any knives? From China? There are plenty of knives from China that don't go in the don't like it pile. Just not the shitty made ones. Um, good, well-made knives from China. <clears throat> excuse me. Don't go in the don't like it pile, but these cheap ass mass produced um, made out of crappy material ones, usually go in the don't like it pile. Um, I'm not doing the lock test on this one either. Just not doing it. So that one, there we go. And now we have one more Smith & Wesson. What is it with Smith & Wesson in this box? So this one is $7.99. We've got $5.99, $6.99, $7.99, 8CR13 MOV, harpoon blade with partial serration. I hate it. 
already. If that isn't in the discount bin at a gas station, I don't know what is. 1994 called. They want their skateboard tread back. Um, seriously, it's sandpaper. It's sandpaper. Glued onto the knife. Um, but, okay, we're going for positives again. It's a frame lock. It's a deep carry clip. It's, no, not centered. It's not centered. Nope. Nope. Um, let's see what happens. <sighs> nope. And you've got clear half the, half the, the blade is serrated, which, especially in a knife this size, why? Why are there serrations at all? Um, good old boy, I have to check Facebook messages. I don't know if I got your message today. I don't know. But I'll, I will check. Even with the thumb studs. So I feel like they just threw out the trash with this. You know what I didn't do? You know what I didn't do? Well... The one thing I can say is that the blade on this is, I always speak just a moment too soon. No, the blade is actually finished pretty well on this guy out of the box. Um, and this one too, if you can avoid those serrations and get it to get on the paper. I'm trying to avoid the serrations and it's hard because it's so small. It's not as good as the others, but still, though, it's I wouldn't I wouldn't pay I wouldn't pay two ninety nine for this thing, let alone seven ninety nine. Ugh. Now there is one more thing in the GI box. Sorry, there's two in the GI box. These three Smith and Wessons go go straight in the crap pile. Yeah, it, it must have. Um, you did. You did miss what I'm carrying today. I had like nine different knives on the on the table. You're gonna have to. What I opened the box with was the um, the M4 PM2 though with the jade scales. Um, let's see. What are we looking for? A buck mini bantam. U.S. made of U.S. and import parts. Okay, that's cool. They put it together in the U. Assembled in the U.S. It says U.S. and made. USA made. So they assembled it in the US made of parts from or sourced overseas. Okay. Um, oh, Jesus, really? How much they want for this thing? $12.99. They don't even give you a key ring to put it on. And you can feel. Yeah. So if you want to talk about how sharp that blade is there. Um, the Bantam is, is not bad. This little thing, though, like the book, this is a mini Bantam. This is the Nano Bantam. This is not a Bantam. I wouldn't pay $12.99 for this any day of the week. So we're going to throw that in the pile with the box. Great. we got one more. One more in this GI box. God, I feel bad for anybody that bought the GI box. And it's a Rough Rider. I generally like Rough Riders. I, I do. They're kind of cool little collectibles. I'm almost afraid to open the box, though. So if you'd all join me in a moment of silent prayer or just a moment of silence and, you know, hope it doesn't suck, whatever, just, you know, dear knife gods or whoever you may be believe is in charge of this unboxing, 
Please don't let it suck. Make it be decent. Not great. We're not even asking for great. Just don't let it suck. Amen. That's all. The blade steel on the Bantam is 420HC. Sorry, I didn't I didn't tell you that. Yeah, 420HC. Um, and this guy right here, the Rough Rider, is uh, knowing that it's probably 420A, more of a showpiece and a collectible than uh than our usable knife. But okay. Hopefully our our prayer has paid off. I have a lot of Buck knives that I really like. Buck is like a classic knife brand. They went off the rails for a little bit, I think, personally, trying to make some cooler models, and they got away from what the formula that just worked. Um, but they're, you know, for the most part, they're back to just making good, solid pieces of blade. Huh? Yeah. Not bad. Nice red. What is this? My What is this? Yeah, red micarta. I was right. Red micarta, black G10 underliners, brushed stainless steel bolsters, brass lanyard tube. I okay. We're looking good. Slip joint with half stops. Not bad. What do we, does it say the steel? It's, uh, it doesn't say the steel, but I'm sure it's just like a 420. Um, or I'm sorry, a 440. There we go. And what is this? $12.99. I would like to thank everybody that joined me in the moment of prayer to the knife gods to make one knife in the box that didn't suck. Um, you know, the thing about Rough Riders, they're not the best quality. They're not the finest materials. Although, red, this this is a really nice, it looks like a linen micarta with the G10 underliners. Um, and uh, I, good old boy, these are not my knives. These belong to Jason, so I can't even talk to you about that. Um, it's got nice design work. And the thing about the Rough Riders is, is that they are good collectibles. They're nice little collection pieces. You can pass them on. Um, they're great starter knives. Me and Dave talked about this in, in another unboxing. They're great, they're great starting knives, starter knives for like, you know, young man, young woman who's just starting to get into it. The steel is easy to take care of. It's decent. It's not great. Um, and a lot of them are world legal because they're not, most of them are not locking knives. I'm going to put this one in. I like it. So we got one knife in the entire GI box of five knives that goes in. I like it. And four sitting there in crap. Just crap. Um, but this one, I mean, it's nice. It's comfortable. Um, I'm not sure if I would actually carry it around, but I would definitely keep it as a collection piece. Looks good. Looks good. All right. I like it. I like it. And now I got to get all these scraps of paper off the computer before. Why is that back? Sorry, I don't know why that's back as a display thing. I did not mean to do that. But yes, there are. There are some. And now we know. And knowing is half the battle. So we're going to move on. So that was, that was our entire GI box. That was the entire lowest tier of this thing. We're going to move up to the officer's club box to where we have two knives. And we're going to start with the Victorinox Delmont Ranger Grip 78. Decent sized box. Yeah. Uh, now, are we really ever going to complain about a Victorinox? Probably not. This thing comes in at a Smoky Mountain price of $52.99. Oh, I already like it. I already like it. I have yet to see a Victorinox that doesn't go in the I like it pile. So what do we got? 3.9 inch spear point blade. I'm going to open it up in a second, guys. Let me just read about it. Um, 4.2 inch double cut wood saw, red composition handles with black rubber inserts, 11 tools, including a key ring. Okay, this is not a tool, by the way. Victorinox and every other knife producer. This is not a tool. This doesn't accomplish anything, but we're going to let it go. 
uh, can opener, bottle opener, toothpick, tweezers, large and small Phillips head, screwdrivers, wire stripper, reamer, punch, and sewing all. Six ounces, $52.99. And, of course, Victorinox uses their, their proprietary steel, which is based on the German 1.146, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's kind of like an upgraded 420HC, kind of. So let's start on the back side here where we have Phillips head and we have, what is this, probably the all? Yep. Okay. Standard, kind of Victorinox. Um, this is as much a tool as a bottle opener is. There, I said it. These um, rubber inserts feel really good. They're, they're not rubbery, like squishy but they give you just a little bit of grip there. I like the weight on it. It feels really good. Um, I guess, you know what? We're going to do the saw blade first because it's kind of sticking out there. Damn. Look at that. That is, wow. That is a saw. That is going to go through some wood. Not big, not like a tree, but, you know, little branches and stuff. Um... Not bad at all. Let's close that up. What is this guy? Uh, looks like we have, so combination here, can opener. I did my little video once to show you how these can openers work. Believe it or not, there are tons of people that have never used a can opener like this. I have no idea how it works. Also, your bottle opener, I guess, and a uh, smaller screwdriver. Okay. Uh, you know what's different for Victorinox? You have your tweezer and your toothpicks on the same side. Cool. And now whoa, we got this guy. I lied. So you have, that is just can opener. Then you have your bottle opener and a larger screwdriver. And that's your wire stripper. And now for the big guy. Now, is this one handable? Yes, it is. Look at that blade. Mm. Oh, that feels so good. And by feels so good, I mean it doesn't feel like anything at all. I'm not doing that on camera, sorry. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, this is great. And this, oh, this locks. It's a weird lock. So, hmm. So that is a dip. Look at that lock. That is a weird lock. So we've got to like use a nail, thumbnail in action. So I want to show you, but I also don't want to cut myself. You actually have to put your nail in there and pull it out. And then this is a different kind of a Torinox. I've not seen this before, but this is awesome. And this definitely goes and I like it. This is a nice piece. And this is something I would carry this camping. Definitely something I would like to like have, pass on to the boys one day. Um, great essential tools for just, I mean, toolbox use, throwing in a bag, keeping in the car. Awesome. So at least the officer's club box is starting out good. Where did I put the I like it pile? Right here. Okay. So Jason, your officer's club box is, is working out pretty well. Now we're going to move on to Condor. Can't go wrong with Condor most of the time either. Condor Primal Cleaver, 1095 carbon steel cleaver blade, 1095, great steel, Ten, for, you know, outdoor stuff. 1095, four-inch carbon steel blade, brush shot and finish, micarta handles, a full tang, 0.12-inch thick with double hollow rivets, uh, weighs 8.11 ounces. It comes with a handcrafted leather sheath. Um, there is two in the like it pile out of, out of the six we opened so far. It reminds me of something from Domino's pizza. I'm just saying the box, you know, like I expect to get cheesy bread out of this box. I'm going to try to open the box now. Okay. Come on. There we go. We got it. All right. So standard. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So standard condor. Um, we got a little, oh, oh, we got a condor sticker. Look at a condor sticker, a little condor sticker, um, carbon steel warning you about it will rust if not maintained properly. 
a uh, little condor catalog. That's new. I've never seen that from condor. Look at that. I want one right away. I want one. Um, condor. I, I, so Craig, Craig Reamer, Reimer, he uh, comments often and he has sent me a bunch of stuff and I'm doing a model for him right now. A couple models actually. He is a huge fan of condor. I love condor. Condor makes great stuff. I don't have a lot of it, but their quality is actually really, really good. Really, really good. Um, and I'm really liking, so there's another one, that new kind of motif with the, whatever that is in, I'm, I'm, I gotta check out a few of those. So we have, and of course covered in oil so that it doesn't get rusty, but smaller size cleaver. It's a nice, it is a nice satin finish. Handles a little bit small, but you know what? It feels, it feels good. It kind of, it I don't know what the word I'm looking for. It's kind of melted into your hand, though. You know what I mean? And got a nice little lanyard bead on there for you already with a little lanyard. Um, wow, that jimping is is aggressive, but it's just where you need it to be. Uh, this is – it smells like the leather of the shoe. Hold on. Hold on. we got to do a smell test. Oh, their leather – number one, their leather work is awesome, but their leather is such high quality all the time. I love it. Um, so, CS, I agree with you with their older stuff, but you all, oh, you did say they're new to it. I agree with you, their older stuff could be a little hit and miss. Their newer stuff over the last three, four years is, I think, is all excellent. Like, they've really improved. Beautiful work, full tang. Uh, this micarta is really well finished. It's very, feels really nice. You know, the weight and everything, the, the balance is great. You hardly, I mean, for something that they say, what is this, weighs eight ounces? It does not feel eight ounces. It it feels super light. Now we might have a little trouble doing the paper test because it's got oil on the blade, and I don't have paper towel right here. But it doesn't it doesn't care. Normally that oil would would make the paper kind of stick to it. That is beautiful. That is awesome for just and I don't I, you, I don't know if you can. I don't know if it's picking it up because of all the oil. It's got a really nice two-tone finish, um, sort of like a, a bead blast finish up here, and then the satin grinds. Um, there's Craig. There you are. I was wondering if you're going to be here for the for the Condor. Um, check it out. I mean, it's 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 really a nice little piece. And then let's check out the sheath. Now, one thing you gotta, and I have to say this often, if you have a good high quality carbon steel piece. Do not store it in the leather sheath because that is just asking for rust. Um, it, it, moisture cannot get out of there. So you have to store it. Now, you, if you're carrying it, you can carry it, of course, in the sheath. But when you're done, you take it out. You put it away for the day. Take it out of the sheath. Don't store it in the sheath because that just keeps moisture right next to the carbon steel. and It will rust like crazy. Um, but that is... I love Condor's leather. That is really nice. That is a really nice, and again, eight ounces that carries like it's two or three ounces. Uh, Jason, this might be the gem of this box so far. Um, this absolutely goes in. I like it. This is something I love to carry camping. Um, I see this being used for food prep. Uh, it's a little thin to do like a whole lot of woodworking with, but I think you could feather stick. Um, I think that you could do some 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 uh, some wood processing and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Wow, CS, that's not cool. I would return it. I bet if you returned it, they would they would give you a new one. All right, so this is awesome. This goes and I like it. And that is seventy two seventy three, which honestly I think is a little bit much for what you're getting, but it is what it is. Uh, the last item in this box is in the general's box. We have one item left, and it's a Benchmade. It is Benchmade in the Hunt class, which is you know, kind of like a brand line of Benchmade. They've got the blue class now, the black class. They've got Hunt, um, and these are outdoor, um, you know, basically hunting outdoors kind of knives. So I'm excited to see what we've got here. What do we have here? Uh, CPM S30V stainless steel drop point blade, satin finish, stabilized wood handles, um, 4.3 ounces, uh, same thickness steel, 0.12 inch, 
Smoky Mountain price is 153 brown leather sheath. It is the Benchmade Saddle Mounting Mountain Skinner. So let's go ahead and get this guy out. I got a I need a knife. Does not smell as good as the condor leather. It smells good. It smells good. It does not smell as good. Chris, remember, this is uh, you got to talk to Jason about that. This is his box, not mine. I'm just unboxing it. Um, so retention's pretty good. Simple leather sheath. But, oh, that is pretty. Interesting spine work there. Oh, and good thinking. Okay, we'll get to that. So here's the stabilized wood handles. They are removable. So if you wanted to do a wrap on it or something instead, you could. So that's really interesting. Um, like, you know, it doesn't have a backspacer because it's a full tang knife. It feels a little bit thin. Probably the exact same thickness as the cleaver maybe it just feels thin because it's longer to me i mean if that i mean it's longer so it feels thinner if that makes sense um but what i really love here is that they give you two areas of jimping so if you were if you wanted to use this skinning or you wanted to get some real fine control of the tip of that for any reason um you know you you have your standard jimping for right where your thumb's gonna go and then you could use that forward jimping to really lock your finger in there. I mean, I suppose you could put your thumb up there too if that's how you're going to use it. Um, but that's a nice, I mean, that's a simple little thing to think of that really makes a difference. It's a, I mean, it is a simple design, but it's a, it's kind of, it's got an elegance in its simplicity. You know what I mean? Um, nice big piece of S30V, which kind of tells you why it costs 150 bucks. Um, yeah, it, Jason, it's S30V. So you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna hold on to this one. Or if you're gonna trade it off, get a really good deal for it. Um, again, you know, they say 4.3 ounces, which is hold on. This is twice the weight, but I don't I don't feel neither one of them feels the weight that they're saying. When I hold the two of them in my hand, this one it does feel lighter. But here's a here's a funny thing you guys might not know. Um, so when you hold knives in your hand, you got to switch them back and forth because your dominant hand will make things feel lighter than your non-dominant hand. So if I'm holding the heavier one in my non-dominant hand, I'm going to perceive it as heavier. If I switch, it could swap it up because you know my dominant hand is used to holding things stronger, for lack of a better word. Um, so automatically the knife feels lighter in your dominant hand than it does in your non-dominant hand. Um, so always do that when you're comparing. But, you know, this is twice the weight of this one. Somehow, I mean, just more steel, but they feel so, neither one of them feels the weight that they, that they are. They feel really light. I mean, really light and maneuverable for both of them. Um, this one doesn't feel a hair over two ounces, you know, as I'm, as I'm moving it around. So of course we need to do this. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, this is a real, I mean, now if you EDC a fixed blade, um, and I know some people do, this one looks, I mean, it seems to me like this would be a great choice because it is slim. It's not going to be that obtrusive. You've got enough blade to work with for just about any EDC scenario and then some outdoors type work too. Um, great features. The sheath is beautiful. And I say this from time to time and we go back and forth on it, but it also, you know, when you're around the Karens and the, I don't know, what's the male, the Chads, you take this out to do some stuff. It's not a, it's like the difference between taking out a, a Ruger 1022 in a black plastic stock and the traditional wood grain stock. You know what I mean? Like 
they don't go crazy because they're same knife, same same knife, different. You know, it's just it's a little hunting knife. It's you know that's all it is. It's it's a nice, simple little knife to use. It'd be a great EDC if you EDC a fixed blade knife, um, and doesn't smell as good. But I mean, you know, Benchmade is even though their quality control is slipping lately. Their fixed blade stuff, it, there's less to go wrong on a fixed blade than on a folder. There just is. So um, it's it's kind of nice. Uh, hey, Todd, I'm glad you're here. I need you to shoot me an email because I just figured out I have a skiff knife that's supposed to be with you. And it's in an envelope under some boxes on a desk, by the way. Um, so, you know, obviously that's going to go in I like it. So at the end of this whole unboxing, um, we've got, well, we've got these four just atrocious things in the not only don't like it pile, but the what the hell are you even doing pile? The taking, I'm calling this the taking out the trash pile because literally I feel like that's what they're doing. They're taking out the trash and throwing it in the box and being like, we'll just get rid of this stuff. Whatever. Then we've got some, and, and believe me, this is not about price, and this is not about fancy names, whatever, because we've got the Rough Rider, which is the same price as the Buck Bantam. <clears throat> it's just much better quality and a much better value, which is why it is in the like it pile. So we've got the Rough Rider, we've got the Victorinox, and then we've got the Condor and the Benchmade all chilling out in the like it pile. Um, so, you know, it's... That's a 50% garbage ratio in this box. And I'm upset because the last time we did one of these unboxings, I actually said, and I remember, I was like, hey, I think the quality of the box is getting back up. And then they did this. And I feel personally insulted. It could be me or it could be the rum talking. I feel like they put these four knives in here to personally offend me because they knew I would unbox this. And they were like, oh, you're going to be optimistic? Take that. Um, but no, I, I think realistically, somebody had said it before in the comments. I can't remember who it is, and forgive me. I think they just took what they have a lot of stock and stuff that's not that's not sitting around, that, that's not selling and sitting around. And they threw it in the box. And they were like, let's, let's unload this. And they did it in the GI box because it's the lowest level. And they're like, the stuff that's good, though, is really good. It's really good stuff. I love this Condor, and I love this Benchmade, and I especially love this Victorinox. Um, this is awesome. Um, and this Red Rider, this Ref Rider, even though it's not as, the, the quality materials and all this stuff is not as high, this is something that I would, like, if it was mine, I would keep it in a collection, and I would pass it on to my kids one day. And, um, no, Craig, this is, uh, I, I went girly. This is, um, pineapple juice, coconut rum, coconut rum, pineapple juice, and grenadine. Um, mostly just coconut rum. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, well, you know what? I, this is, this only applies so far because at a certain point when you shell out money for something and they give you trash, it's, you know, it, everybody's entitled to like what they like. But when you pay good money and they give you trash, they're still giving you trash. You know what I mean? Like that's, I understand, I understand your point. Um, but I'm not just looking at it at, at, in terms of do I like it or not? It's the value that Jason has shelled out for this box for us all to look at and what he's getting in return for it. And uh, those four first knives are not good return on, on, on investment is, is what I'm saying. Now, he might love some of these knives. He might want to carry them around. And that's every, I say this all the time, and I believe it with all my heart. The greatest thing about the knife collecting community is that there's something for everybody. Um, and what turns me on and fills my little heart with joy when I get a new, a new box in the mail is it doesn't have to be the same for everybody. Um, and that's what's great because then we can, we can discuss, we can trade, we can collect, we can pass around. You know what I mean? But when I have to look at a box, I got to look at it in terms of not only do I like it or I not like it, but um, 
you know, where is the value in terms of money in, money out? But remember, again, flipping the script again, I always say we never look at the box purely as dollars in to dollar value out. There's a lot of other ways to look at a subscription box, but you do have you do have to look at it in terms of am I am I shelling money into this company and are they shelling out crap? Because um, you know that's that is a thing. Um, there's uh when I when I post I think tomorrow um, this is such a true statement. Thank you. That is an absolute true statement. When I when I post, I think it's the the mossy oak little knife unboxing tomorrow is what I'm posting tomorrow. I, you know, I kind of say, and I don't point this out, but um, we're talking about comparing that to the Kershaw Shuffle, which I love, and I never would have discovered it if it wasn't for Battle Box. Honestly, uh, it came. My first Kershaw Shuffle came in a Battle Box once upon a time, and. Um, you know, that is one of the main, one of the big attractions to me of these boxes, I say it over and over and over, is the opportunity to find things that you might not otherwise have found. You're going to be disappointed in some stuff. Um, but, you know, I mean, like, so here's a good, this, I probably, this is awesome. And I might go buy one of these for myself. I probably would not have gone and found this. I mean, I know Victorinox is a great brand. I know they make great knives. But this particular one, I probably would not have put my hands on and seen had I not gotten a chance to unbox it. You know what I mean? So like one of the great values of these boxes is the opportunity to see stuff that you might not otherwise have seen. Um, hey, SAS. That's how I'm pronouncing it because I hope that's what it is. Um, I'm sorry. We're just about wrapping it up, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, here we go. Um, you're, you'll be able to catch the whole thing again as we go. You know, and, and this is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, it's a simple little knife. And, you know, when I liked it, I put a video up and I said, hey, guys, I like this knife. I discovered it in a box. Unfortunately, um, you know, sometimes you end up with this. But now, um, good old boy, on the other hand, you know, when good old boy gets, gets a box like this, if you were to unbox this, he finds a value in this. So that's a great box for him. That, I mean, that's the whole thing. That's why these boxes, it's hard, it's hard to when we're doing when we're measuring disappointment, it's hard to remember sometimes that this box is not packed for the personal enjoyment of you or me or whoever Jason or whoever is opening the box. They have to pack this box for every single customer that's going to open this box. And it's crapshoot. I mean, it is. Some people are going to love it. Uh, some people are going to hate it. Some people are going to meh the whole thing. You know, um, it just, it, it, it is what it is. But I mean, I, I have never seen anything from the Benchmade Hunt um, selection. I'm glad I got a chance to see this knife because I am now maybe more inclined to pay a little bit more attention to that particular product line. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, for those of you who have not joined us here for the live surprise unboxing, um, because yeah, I know CS, they, they always ship out later in the month. I don't know why it's just what he does. I think the other, some of the other subscriptions go uh, uh, under the product line, go earlier in the month. I love monthly knife club. I can't wait. Um, but, um, you know, so for those of you who are watching the rerun of this, who have not joined us here for the live, because I didn't tell anybody, I didn't, I decided I was doing this and like within five minutes, set everything up to do the live stream. Um, Please do comment what you thought of this unboxing, what you liked, what you didn't, um, what you feel about the boxes in general, you know? And um, coming up soon, we've got the TAC, TAC pack. I got my shipping notification. Uh, we've got the Glock 3.0 box coming also from TAC pack. Uh, we've got Battle Box just sent us yet another delay notice for the knife of the month. Um, I'm not sure where Barrel and Blade is, but I'm sure they're on their way sometime soon. We've got uh, EDC, the EDC club coming. I did, you know what? I did look into the USA Knife Box. Uh, I just, I got I to gotta subscribe to it. I just didn't subscribe to it. I got to do it. Um, but, uh, and good old boy, I will jump on Facebook after I'm done here and check the messages and see what I got from you there, okay? Um, and I will be growing the... Uh, the vet beard back out. <laughs> the job interview's over. So don't worry. 
Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me for a spur of the moment, unannounced live unboxing of this box. Jason, I will be adding this to your big old priority mail large box that's uh, waiting to go out to you. Um, what level am I going with for the USA knife box? I don't know. I got to look at it. I haven't even looked at it really. I mean, I, I got to, I'm not sure, but I'll look and I'll find out. I got to feed, I got to see what I have money to do. Um, you know, left over from other stuff. Um, so, cause I want to invest a lot of money for the summer into the budget blade thing. Cause a lot of people are really into that. Um, so I want to, I want to have, I want to have money, from the Patreon fund and everything to go out and hunt down some really good budget blades to show off to people and then maybe to give away some stuff. So anyway, guys, um, thanks for joining me. Uh, looking forward to your comments and remember that you guys are all absolutely 110% awesome, especially Jason who made this all possible. Um, that I appreciate every single one of you and that uh, I will be back again real soon upload tomorrow and probably one this weekend too. I have so much stuff to show you guys. So I will see you real soon.